Okay, today we're continuing our journey of what's wrong with my tree series. So we're going to talk today about some of the signs and symptoms that might be associated with certain commonly occurring insect pests on trees in Alberta. And once again, I've got Tozo Bozik, arborist extraordinaire and uh, owner of Edmonton-based tree or Yard Whispers and CEO of ATTS Group. Welcome again, Tozo. Welcome, Robert. Nice to see you. Again. Okay, yeah. All right, so we're talking about insect pests. So again, if you had to pick from the big list of possible insects that affect our trees, what would you say the most common insects would be on some of the, the deciduous or, or broadleaf trees? Uh, well, most of the time uh, for the deciduous broadleaf trees is defoliators. Um, there's a whole range of them, okay. but there's a, probably three of the most common is aspen uh, tent caterpillar. Uh, bruce panworm and large aspen tortix. Uh, those are the most common defoliators that happen um, on the broadleaf species. Okay. And as I said, what is the common with all of them? They defoliate uh, the trees. Um, they're eating uh, leaves one way or another, right. either chewing or making the holes or rolling or the leaves up a little bit. Or... The, blowing the leaves up uh, or, or, you know, when they come to the stage, they also uh, provide a you know, cocoon and they roll, uh, roll the leaf. The other one is also um, very common in Alberta, aspen leaf roll, roller. Yep. Uh, that one is a very... Uh, interesting and unique you know they roll the leaves and uh, uh, and you can see that like a small like a little cigarette or roll uh, mm -hmm. that is that is uh, it's funny happened. when you know oftentimes when I get calls and people ask about it it's already they're gone like they're done right yeah. so yeah. but so not a not a terribly serious one but they but they definitely show up and very interesting when all of a sudden your leaves all have these you have all these rolled up leaves on your tree yeah Excellent. Yeah, that, that, that's, okay. a, that's a very common. Yeah, common what are, what are again, some the other? Biggest thing, yeah. uh, silk, uh, silking, even though in mm -hmm. those, uh, it's very common symptoms when you see of them. Webbing Some or of the people webbing and webbing, yeah. they, you're going to see that, that they produce that. Well, and um, you can also uh, see the bug itself, right? You'll be able to notice that, you I'll know, be, the best way you, uh, running around. That's correct. And the best way sometimes for all of the bugs, I said to people, take a sheet of paper, white sheet of paper, and shake the branch. And on that sheet of paper, you then you'll be able to see the uh, you're gonna be able to see the insect or larvae, which is most of the time in the foliage is, is the larvae actually yep. that is uh, that is eating and chewing and and the other things uh, what you're gonna see is not just the loss of the leaves. And many times you're gonna see the actual matter of fact is the is the small little piece of leaves in the on the ground and uh, when they're eating and some of them are I call them a very wasteful uh, eaters, but very efficient and. Mm -hmm. uh, and it comes um, uh, not every year. Many times you need eight or ten years between the, for example, aspen and uh, caterpillar that they show up, and then ten years there is nothing. Yeah. In that sense, but okay. it's it's you it's very obvious obvious. Um, lo biggest one is loss of leaves and chewing and the holes or or rolling leaves. Okay. What are what are some other ones you might um, commonly see in in the deciduous? Um. What did I say, Robert? Ask, I think, I don't know, what about aphids? Do you, like, we do see aphids. What would you see? Oh, okay. So aphids okay. are one. Um, what, would, what else would you see? Like, what um, would you see? What we, okay, so we've, we've got, you've got aphids. What would you expect to see as, uh, to know that you've got them? Uh, with uh, aphids, um, there's a, you know, in the hardwood space, on the hardwood, you know, you, know, you might take a leaves and you're going to see it actually, the first thing you'll notice is going to be ants. Mm -hmm. And actually is going to uh, be able to uh, actually they protect the aphids because of the secretion. And you're going to see the black uh, little uh, on the leaves, you're going to see the black or different colors of the aphids. That you're gonna yeah, you're going to see a whole mass of aphids hanging out and feeding, aphids, right? Yeah, feeding in, in, in that sense. So yeah. um, they, are, they are, again, generally speaking, common, but most of the time they're not. Not, not too uh, serious. No, too serious they just, too. yeah. I think my favorite. No, oh, my favorite gross symptom of aphids is the rain of, of um, sap that, or it's not sap, the honeydew from their oh, inefficient yeah. feeding. They, it rains down and you get the sticky streets or the sticky sidewalks or in worst case, your car is covered in little dots of sticky. Oh. That's uh, and that's that, that's why that's why the ants are protecting them because they love that food source. sticky honeydew and food source for the ants. Yeah, and exactly. Every time you're going to see the uh, and uh, literally like a guarding entire colony of the aphids and you know yeah. going around and just making sure they're, they're 
good and alive. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Any other ones that you might uh, might be common that we might be seeing out there in in Alberta on trees? Um. Like um, any, like I mean, on and our and our hardwood or our deciduous types of trees. Oh. Uh, um, I've heard. Uh, what about uh, uh, scales? Uh, scale insects. Oh. Sorry. Uh, yeah, scales. Um, scales, are, there is a two uh, most common time you're going to find the scales is oyster shell scales, which is usually uh, uh, you're going to find the uh, cotton aster and uh, some other shrub species. And uh, the other one is uh, actually it's uh, lately has been really uh, impacting lots of elk trees. It's called European, uh, European scales, and they're really making the lots of stress to the elm trees. And if you do have elm tree, the, the, you're going to be able to see them because they are also oozing and providing honeydew. And that, is, that, and that drops on the, tr on, the, on the tree along the bark, but also on the, on the sidewalks, and it's black. Um, the best way on the elm, European elm scales is you're looking underside, underside of the of the branch and underside of the leaf, and you're gonna see the like a round shape color, white, uh, and that's the scale. And if you for all of the scales, if you just squish them, you're gonna see the blood. You're gonna see the 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 the, the, the scales. You know, lots of people yeah. no way it's this is insects, but when I told them, it's, yeah. you know. It looks like a little flat little, yeah. little but again, you're like going to see little thing, but there is a bug under, yeah, it is under. There is a, there, yeah. there is a bug under there. And then on the, on the cotton aster and some other shrubs, when you have a oyster shell, oyster shell scales, uh, they are coming. Sometimes you're going to see them like a very dense and heavy infestation, like a, that's why it's called scales. And they have that protection. It's like a scale after scale after scale. And it's, Sometimes you really need to come real close and see is this is normal branch or is something else is going on. Yeah, and it's going to look all the, bumpy or uh, like it's going to look dis deformed in a way because it should deformed. be fairly, fairly smooth, right? So. Yeah, uh, yeah, and you're going to see the uh, when the other way is to with uh, oyster shell scales, you're going to see the branch which is let's say black, you know, with a black bark, and uh, suddenly you see the branch is whitish or 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 yeah. brownish, and they you're going to see the like that how they how they grow so in a, in a yeah. heavy defer, uh, heavy infestation you're going to see the lots of also branches dead uh in the cotton yeah. aster or yeah because they're, the they're basically sucking the life out of the exactly. out of that plant okay let's jump yeah. to conifers what are what are some of the common ones you might see in in the in the conifers or softwoods uh one of the last couple of years is the white pine weevil that usually goes after the spruce actually even though it's called white pine and uh, but it's spruce and uh, and uh, uh, affect the spruce usually up to 30 feet, um, and then they stop when they're young. And one of the best indicator is the, uh, as you have in the spruce leader, that you see the leader is is uh, dead and it's have a, like a shepherd uh, 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 hook. shepherd's crook. Yeah, it falls. Crook, it's, yeah, it's, it's, the, falls. The leader, the the top uh, the top growing point has fallen over. Okay. Fall uh, that, and if you have a small trees, you would be able to go come close and you're gonna see the holes. Mm. You're gonna see the uh, where the holes on that on that leader and that that's um, that's the best way to uh, to. Uh, Find out that, that you have a that you have a, a white pine weevil. It is it is very common. Um, one of the way to control them is to uh, that they go where is the full sunlight, or the trees are exposed to the full sunlight. And if you they have a shades, you know it's going to reduce. And the other way is the only way to control is actually pruning uh, okay. and removing the and removing. But it's again uh, that uh, shepherd crook is the number one. Okay. Uh, and then if you look the close up, you're going to see the holes on that terminal we will, um, yeah, okay. on the terminal, uh, terminal leader, the yeah. leader uh, that yeah. you have. Well, any other insects that we might see um, in the conifers that are oh, common or? All the, all, the, all the time common one is yellowhead that uh, saw fly. Again, goes usually after the spruce trees uh, in the shelter belts and windbreaks. And they like when the, all of the trees are exposed to the sun, full sunlight. And they can be ferocious defoliators um, of the spruce trees that can take whole needles. Okay. Um, generally speaking, trees would be able to recover, but definitely they can reduce the growth. In some cases, they can, uh, yeah. ident uh, they can, trees can die. So the, the, the canopy will look a little thinner or the whole, or they'll just look like there's a bunch less needles and kind of brown and you get close, there's no needles there. Is that what you're yeah, seeing? You're going you're gonna to see that really in some heavy infestation, entire needles are really just stripped off. 
Okay. Because usually spruce trees has a very dense needles, uh, very thick uh, and dense needles. And when you see it and it's like whole, all of them is, is, is gone. And again, the best way is you take a sheet of paper and, uh, and shake the branch and uh, you're gonna see the larvae on the, on, the, on the sheet of paper that is green uh, with a brown head. Uh, the other one is a spruce budworm that is a brown and black head. Uh, so it's it is every time when you see the some of the those uh, the foliages again shake. Got to look at the yeah. You got to look at the you got to look at the critter. You figure out what which one it is, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's where you where you need when you take a photos take and come close up photos because they are very especially yellow headed spruce oak fly. It's a very well camouflaged. At mm -hmm. the beginning you don't see them. It's really they are green. They are really immersed into the into the needles. And that's where is the uh, kind of weekly inspection of your trees or the spruce trees to look for those is very important yeah. uh, that you can see. And then when you see them, that they start beginning, then you, you'll be able to do something about it. Yeah. Uh, but when they're totally uh, infest whole things, it's very few times, you, not, not much you can do about it. Yeah. So again, close up monitoring for this one is very important and it's timing for all of the insects. Um, you know, you can go all the way from April to September but each of them have a window when they're really emerging into the larvae that you'll be able to look at. And, you know, for the uh, spruce budworm is usually May and a little bit in June. Uh, I've seen uh, yellow headed spruce so fly all the way till all, all the way from May to all the way till uh, beginning of August. And again, that's depending on the season. If it's season is uh, uh, wet, uh, none of those insects, like this year we had a very cold and wet, wet season. I, we didn't have a lots of insect problems this year because they don't like it. Yeah. They like well, when it's a warm. And sometimes we catch a break in that way. Yeah. Yeah. And you're right about yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Any other ones you want to highlight? Um, uh, I want to uh, uh, emphasize the one that is really uh, still spreading on the, on the uh, private land is the Mount Pine Beetle. Mm. That is affecting the pine. Uh, if you do have a pine trees, either Scots pine, Jack pine or Ponderosa pine, you gotta watch out for mountain pine beetle. What would um, you watch for then to know? It, uh, most of the time, the, the only way is, is you're gonna find the pitch tubes on the trunk. Uh, now, if you have a young, a young young pine trees, you know, with a small trunk diameter, you don't need to worry about that. It's usually on the tree that is 50, 60 years old and you have a sizable size trunk. And uh, always look for the trunk. And you, if you see the pitch tubes, small little pitch tubes. That's one of the indication and symptoms. And the other one is look for the sawdust. Mm. If you see the sawdust on the bottom uh, or close to the trunk and on the, on the soil, that's, that's definitely one. So first you have to recognize the pine tree versus spruce or-, or Yeah, or, yeah you're gonna have to know fir. your species a little bit, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, because lots of people call me and they have a spruce problem and, and you know, nothing to do with pine. No. Uh, so it's gotta be a pine tree and, and the best symptoms is the, is the pitch tubes and the sawdust. Yeah, you know, the sawdust made me think and jump back into the hardwoods, the deciduous ones. I see a lot of poplar borer out there. And yeah. so some of the other things you might watch for in insects is, is these obvious, these holes or, or, any, or any sort of um, sap running down the trunk or yeah. some other things to watch for. And that'll look a little closer. You could see sawdust with those ones, but yeah. lots of, you know, lots of different insects out there, unfortunately, to watch for. So, yeah. Um, oh, it's... yeah. But I mean, you know, ultimately, you know, the nice thing is, so you're looking for the sign of the in insect and then you're going to look for the insect itself to try to identify it potentially, right? That's I mean, not every time can you see the insect at all, but... Um, but many but, times, you know, if it's under the bark, you have to strip off the, like in case of the mountain pine beetle, to really see the larvae, yeah, you, gotta, uh, you have to take the whole, uh, strip, strip the bark and look at and find the larvae. Yeah. Uh, and of course, in one of the symptoms for the mountain pine beetle is you have a dead tree yeah. um, that is just brown. And, yeah. uh, but that's the final state, that tree is dead. Uh, interesting about mountain pine beetle, actually, I always said it's not the beetle that killed the tree, it's the fungi that, that beetle carries in the mount uh, that then uh, the same as the Dutch elm disease is that it's the beetle uh, carriers of the fungi that get in the trees and the fungi basically choke the tree and kill the tree. Yeah. 
Absolutely. In that sense. It's a, yeah. uh, one of those a wonder of the nature. Yeah, wonderful, uh, <laughs> horrible wonders of nature. Yeah, yeah. Well, but whatever. Is, it's it's you know yeah. it's 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 good to know that. I mean, and I mean, but ultimately our goal with that, that recognizing these insects is to to recognize them early, and then hopefully have a chance to deal with them if possible. And in some cases, we just have to accept that, you know, now we know and 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 move on. So, but yeah. good. As one, one 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 of my clients said. If you don't want to have a problem with insects and diseases, uh, buy the buy the plastic tree, and then you are not have any <laughs> yeah. any problem with that. Yeah. You know, that's uh, awesome. artificial turf and and plastic yeah. plants. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't know if well, I can get. I can't to, behind. I can't get behind that, Tozo. But you know, well, whatever. you have to dust them in any case. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a great duster. So, okay, well, great. Well, thank you very much, Tozo. That's that's great. Let's uh, end it there. Thank Thanks a lot. Yeah.